Hello guys. Today I'm going to show you how to create a sprite bottle in Blender. Without further ado, let's get started. Delete the default cube. I'm going to turn on the screencast key. Then let add in the image reference of the sprite bottle. The link is in the description. The image is not oriented properly, so I'm going to change the orientation. Turn up to the front view, then add in a cylinder object. Bring the vertices countdown to 20 and scale it down. Next, move to the edit mode by pressing tab on your keyboard. Select the edge loop. Turn on the gizmo tool. Next, we're going scale the mesh to match the image reference. Extrude the edge loop with E key and scale with S key to match the bottle. Press Ctrl R to add edge loop and scale it down to match the reference. Let's bevel this edge with Ctrl B and increase the bevel count by pressing plus on your number pad. We're going to continue scaling the mesh to match the image reference. S to scale and E to extrude. You can gently scale the mesh by holding the shift key on your keyboard. I'm going to add a supportive edge loop with Ctrl R and scale it to have a smooth edge flow. I will bring down the edge a little bit to meet where the bottle base start. Next, let's create the bottom by first selecting and insect the face with the I key. If you are having problem insecting the face further like I do, right click to apply and scale it down. I am going to select four faces each round the bottom faces. Let's turn off the image reference for now. Switch to the front view and extrude the selected faces downward to match according to the reference. I'm going to add a subdivision surface to the mesh to visualize how it will look. Turn on proportional edit and choose connected only to correct the proportion of the object. This is looking good. You can turn off the subdivision surface if your system is lagging. Now let's move to the neck of the bottle. Let's extrude this edge to match close to the neck. Turn off proportional edit. I will extrude again to reach the neck base then add a loop cut and scale it to create the neck ring. Bevel it with Ctrl B to have a good edge flow. Let's move back to the body of the bottle to create the little dot hole around the sprite bottle. Add a loop cut and increase the count up to four. Switch to vertices select and select each vertices round the body by pressing Ctrl Shift Plus. Now, Let's bevel the vertices by pressing shift Control b on your keyboard. Reduce the segment count down to 2 and bring down the shape count till it form a circle shape. The width seems too big to me so I'm going to reduce it a little bit down. Good! Select the middle vertices by pressing Control minus once on your keyboard, then scale it inward with Alt-S. Let's bevel the middle vertices again. Looks good. Next, let's create the finished top of the bottle. Select the top edge loop and extrude it upward till it match the reference. Let's duplicate the conner vertices by pressing Shift D to create the neck thread. Bring the duplicated vertices downward and press P to separate by selection. Turn back to object mode and turn off subdivision for both objects. Select the duplicate object and move to edit mode. Select the vertice with A and extrude it upward. Add a vertices and increase the count to two. Move with the gizmo tool on X axis and scale it down on Z like so. Extrude the vertices and scale it on the Z-axis. 
back to object mode. Delete the subsurface, add a screw modifier. Increase the step to 20 and the iteration up to 5 or 6 as it fits. Then increase the screw count to 0.02 or 0.05 as it fits. Bring down the thread. Then back to edit mode. The normals of the mesh is not facing the correct directions. Before we do anything, let's apply the screw modifier. Press Alt N to recalculate the normals outside. Press the front slash key to isolate the thread. Turn on the snap tool. Select the edge loop and snap it to the facing edge. Select the base edge loop and extrude it downward. Press S to scale then zero on the Z-axis. I will use the knife tool K to add cut on the face to match the loop. Press the play key on your keyboard to apply cut. Press Ctrl Z to switch to wireframe view. Select the two vertices and press M to merge at center. Little mess up here. I will delete the cut with Ctrl X, then merge with the top loop. Selecting the vertices and press G twice to move to the vertices along the edge and merge. Select loop and press F to fill up the face of the mesh. Press G twice to slide to the edge. Let's do the same thing for the top. Select the top edge loop and extrude it upward. Press S to scale, then press zero on the Z axis. I will use the knife tool K, again to add cut on the face to match the loop. Press the play key on your keyboard to apply cut. Press Ctrl Z to switch to wireframe view. Select the two vertices and press M to merge at center. F key to fill up the face. Press G twice to slide to the edge. I'm going to add a subdivision surface to the mesh to visualize how it will look. Looks good. Select the bottle and move to the edit mode. Next, let's create the cap of the bottle. Select the neck base edge loop and press V to separate the mesh. Press L to select linked object. Scale the object by pressing S and Shift Z. Let's separate the cap from the bottle by pressing P then selection on your keyboard. Let's hide the cap for now. Select and join the thread and bottle by pressing Ctrl J. Now select both edge and fill up the space with F key. Select the top edge, extrude and scale, then extrude inward. I will bring it down a bit with the gizmo tool. Let add in a loop cut with Ctrl R and move it up. Back to object mode. Left click and press shade smooth. Nice, let's revert back to the cap. In edit mode, press A to select all and subdivided the mesh and increase the count up to two. Select the horizontal edge loop, left click and click loop tools then choose circle. If you didn't see loop tool, go to edit. Preference. Add-ons and search for loop tool and node wrangler, then turn it on and save preference. Let's bring down this edge and bevel it. Increase the count and apply. Next. Select the corresponding faces with shift Control plus and press X and delete face only. Select the base loop, press Control plus to increase selection and bring it up with the gizmo tool. Looking good. 
Bring down the loop. Bevel the edge loop and reduce the count with Ctrl plus. Select center loop and scale inward. Then bevel it again. Next, let's add in a loop cut and bevel it. Delete the center loop and select two edge then press Ctrl Shift Plus to select each edge around the body. Next, bevel the selected edge, then press Ctrl minus. Press Alt S and scale outward, then bevel it again. We'll need to change the bevel shape back to 0.5 for it to look correctly. Good. Moving on, insect the top face with the I key. Let's extrude. I will add an edge loop and bring it up. Back to the base, select and extrude and scale in the edge loop. I will add in a loop cut and bring it down. In object mode, left click and shade smooth. Let's bring back the other objects by pressing the front slash key on your keyboard. In edit mode, let's add a edge loop and bevel it. Scale it inward and bevel it again. Let's make a little changes to it. Back to edit mode, press shift Z to switch to wireframe mode. Select the corresponding edge loop and bring it down a little bit. Looks good. Let's move to adding materials to the sprite bottle. Bring up the panel and change to shading editor or you can as well roll over the panel and press Shift F3. Click new to add a material. Let's change the color to something close to green and yellow. Press Z on your keyboard to change to material preview mode. Then increase the transmission up to 1. Select the cap and add a new material. Change the color to something suitable. Let's give the bottle a label. Select the bottle and move to edit mode. Choose the face loop and press Shift D to duplicate. Press P and separate by selection. Select the duplicate mesh. In edit mode, select an edge and press Ctrl E, then mark seam. Select all and press U then unwrap the mesh. Next, press the number to create a unique material for the label. Press Ctrl T, then choose the sprite image label. If you press Ctrl T and it doesn't work, you'll need to turn on the Node Wrangler add-in in the Preferences add-in section. Back to Render View. Reduce the transparency to zero. We'll need to correct the UV layout. To do that, expand the canvas. Switch to UV Editor. Switch to Material Preview. In Edit Mode, press U to unwrap. Select the vertical vertices, press S to scale on x-axis, then press 0 and apply. Do the same thing for the other. Rotate to 90 degree. Use G key to drag it on the x-axis as shown. Then scale on x and y axis to fit the label. Nice! Let's set up the scene for rendering. Change to World Shading, select the background node and press Ctrl T. Open the image texture and add in your preferred HDRI. Turn on both World and Light Scene Lighting. In the Shading panel, press Shift A, move to Shader and add in a Mix Shader. Press Shift D to duplicate the background and plug it to Mix Shader. Now move to Input, then add in a Light Path node. Plug it to the Mix Shader Factor.
select the camera and press numpad 0. In the object properties, change your transformation to this and press Z twice to zoom in the camera. In the render properties, change render engine to cycles and devices to CPU. Change the render samples to 200. Change light paths to 8. Turn on transparent in film. In color management, change view to filmic, then look to high contrast. In the output properties, change percentage to 200 also. Change file format to FFmpeg video and select where files should export to. Change encoding to QuickTime and video codec to QD animation. Change output color back to RGBA for transparency background. Switch to timeline or press Shift F12. Reduce end frame to 100. Move to the first frame, then press Shift A and add an empty plane axis. Press I on your keyboard and add a rotation keyframe and do the same on frame 100. Switch to object properties. Change the Z rotation to 359 and press I to add a keyframe. Select the camera first then the plane axis. Then press P and select object. Keep transform. Press play to see the animation. Nice. Switch to Composition Editor. Turn on Use Node and View Layer Properties Data. Turn on Denoising Data. Press Shift A, search for Denoise, then plug in the corresponding socket to their home. Then choose Accurate. Back to Layout, press Render, then Render Animation. You can as well press Ctrl F12. Then wait till it's done. I will be looking forward to see what you'll come up with. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.